Hey, I'm Ed Bolian, and welcome back to my garage. It's a beautiful day here in Metro Atlanta, and it's also been about six months since the last time that I did a garage update video. And so I thought a lot has changed since then, so it was time to kind of go back over it. I've still got the daily drivers, the CL55 and S55 that live up in the Miles Through Time Museum, the Sway Off-Road Cayenne, the electric Audi my wife drives most of the time, and the GL63 that we use whenever we need a little bit more child carrying capacity. But since then, I did sell the Monterey Blue, one of one LP640. I sold the six-wheeled Range Rover. I sold the Rolls-Royce. And I made a little bit of an effort to sell the Spiker, but that didn't happen for several good reasons, but the biggest news today is that once again we have transformed my Yakuza Lamborghini Diablo SV. It's a 1997 Diablo SV that I bought out of Japan, I don't know, six, eight, ten months ago. I don't know how long it's been, but a lot has happened since then. Now this car was originally Rosso Imola, and we imported it and immediately took it right to SEMA, so I guess I'd make it, I guess I bought it in the summer, that was in October, November, and we wrapped it with the team from Gloss it in Verde Scandal. Then I got a call from Rob Pitts and his team needed it for a Netflix show for the second season of Tex-Mex Motors. He was so inspired by the storyline of buying a Yakuza gangster's car and transforming into something that we might enjoy in its more, I don't know, stock-ish form that he wanted to replicate that on the show. And so they said they were going to paint the car for free. And I'll be honest, the, a free valued paint job is about what I got, but my favorite car color of all time is orange, especially pearlescent orange. So when they said, what color do you want? I said Arancio, California, the correct three-layer pearlescent orange for the Diablo, which you would have seen on a handful of SVs on the GT and on the six liter cars, and I love the way it came out. We went back with the matte black graphics, the matte black accents, the matte black wing, and I am so happy to have a naturally aspirated gated manual V12 pearlescent orange Lamborghini here in the driveway. Now, I did entertain the idea of going Arancio Atlas when I repainted five years ago now the Verde Draco LP640 that was black and needed a lot of paint work when I bought it. I think these two just have to be a fixture. It doesn't get any better than a manual LP640 for me. Even relative to things that cost a multiple of what they are worth, they're just so perfect. And it's great to see Mercy's continuing to get love kind of at all price points and all the range of availability, but mine are not going anywhere. I've got about 55, 56,000 miles on the coupe. I don't know, 25, 26,000 miles on the Roadster and racking them up as fast as I possibly can. But uh, there are some pretty crazy Mercy transactions about to happen. So uh, I'm always excited to see how that goes. But I really felt like the Diablo was the perfect addition kind of in the vertical lineage to the Mercy. And I got to say, I've been putting a ton of miles on the Diablo. It's still got its rhinestone sparkly air vents. It's still got the wrong seats, the wrong steering wheel. But I fit pretty well. I drove it about four hours yesterday. I woke up with my back hurting, totally unrelated, but I love the car and I have really, really had a blast. Obviously, I've got a type here, gated manual V12 cars, and it's crazy to see some of the recent transactions continuing to go up. Obviously, the market's always a little bit uncertain, but as you search Auto Tempest and all the other sites to figure out what you're shopping for next, it's good to keep an eye out because I don't think you can go wrong with these. I think if, if only one car had to stay, I think it would be the 2009 Nero Nemesis LP640 Roadster. I just think it is the ultimate manifestation of what I mean when I say I love exotic supercars. Now, I will concede that over the last five years of owning this car and three years of owning the Roadster, I have kicked the can down the road on some pretty big maintenance expenses and ideas, and I'm not really sure when that's going to catch up with me. It may be before too terribly long. The clutch on the coupe was already slipping when I got it about 20,000 miles ago, and the Roadster feels a little bit iffy. Both of them misfire occasionally, which all Mercies are prone to do, but honestly, I'm probably looking at clutches, throw-out bearings, all the seals, plugs, coils, a valve adjustment on each, which they're due based on time and probably how they run. And that's, I mean, that's a big ticket item. It's also hard to find the expertise. And so I'm kind of interviewing different shops locally and far away to see who has the right expertise because the guys that I've used historically don't always feel like 
biting a job that big off. Each of them, it's probably 50 to 60 work hours on each car. And uh, that's not cheap. It's amazing how much stuff's gotten to. So not as many miles on the 640s in the last six months, but still happy to have them around. And next to them is the most recent acquisition, or you might say re-acquisition. I bought back the 2006 formerly flooded manual transmission Gallardo Spider from Car Trek 1. I just drove it all the way back from New Jersey. It had only been driven 89 miles since I sold it to the guy three years ago. He tried a few different things to sell the car, not all that successfully, and so I got it back after the most expensive Lamborghini rental of all times with just 89 more miles on it. Now, it was kind of deferred, let's say, on some maintenance, so I just got it back from some servicing and it is looking, sounding, driving, feeling great. I have to actually have it re-salvage inspected in the state of Georgia whenever a formerly branded title comes back into the state. But overall, I love it. It was just one of those cars that I always sort of felt like got away and I am so glad to have it back. It is still wrapped exactly the same with the sponsors of that year down the back in what I think kind of looks like Lamborghini's blue Le Mans. It adds some nice color to the array between the two black cars, but I am really, really happy to have it back. I think it kind of represents the ultimate manifestation of the Car Trek premises. Our first Car Trek from 2020. Who could buy the coolest depreciated supercar for the price of a C8 Corvette? And so it is still rock and rolling and ready to go. Still smells a little funky if you let it sit too long, but I love it. Now, it needed a lot. We had to push start it every time because the battery was so dead and we couldn't find the right one to replace it on the road. Uh, the air conditioning didn't work. It now works a little bit. A lot of it is kind of coming back together, but I just love a beater gated manual Lamborghini as evidence would show. And this is the perfect addition, I think, to the fleet. And next to it is another car that I do honestly continue to love. My 2009, formerly owned by Missy Elliott, Spiker C8 Laviolette. Now, I did list the car for sale earlier this year because I was trying to sell it and the Monterey Blue LP640 to buy a Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport that had been owned by the factory for the Frankfurt Motor Show, and then Birdman, then uh, Justin Bieber, then Floyd Mayweather, and then Lil Uzi Vert, and one of the Whittington brothers' nephews. And so I was excited about that, but it just didn't work out. And so I'm very glad that it didn't work out to sell this car. I got some really good leads, but I just took it off the market. To be honest, I still want to have a Spiker. I just kind of feel like this one's too nice for me. It's only got 3,900 miles, and about half of those I've put on since I got it. But I need to just say, Forget it. It's the one that I want to have. I actually do love the car in black, especially with the red interior and all of the metal accents. And so loving the Spiker. Going to keep putting some miles on it. Still flood car shopping in Dubai. Got some interesting news on that front, so we'll see how that pans out. But these are really, I think, the peak examples of the justification for shrewd negotiation that makes up my garage. And so as I kind of look and think, man, 18-year-old Ed would actually have an aneurysm if he saw that all this was ever going to happen. And it's really all possible because you guys keep watching these videos. My credit keeps supporting the buying habit, and they keep headed in the right direction. And that's really, I guess, what it's all about is making sure that I'm not taking these massive depreciation hits. And even in a world where the car market is a bit uncertain, you might say, this feels pretty bulletproof. I like to look like I won the lottery, I used to say 10 years ago, then it was 15, it's almost 20 years ago now, but I am still super happy with the cars that I grew up loving, being able to drive them whenever I want, and having a blast. And I just want to thank as well uh, you guys for watching, but also Auto Tempest for making this video possible. Most of these cars were actually found on Auto Tempest, or I was browsing Auto Tempest, and that made me remember who might have one, and I go out making some phone calls. But it is the most powerful way to shop for your next car because they compile the results from all the major listing sites into one place. Autotempest.com, all the cars, one search. It's the tagline, but it's also the truth. It's how we do all these car trek things. It's how we discover sometimes terrible examples of really cool cars, which is my target. Also overpriced examples that Freddie buys and the total wrong thing that Tyler ends up with. But either way, we all love using Auto Tempest and I hope that you love it too. And I hope you'll continue to do so, so we can keep having a whole lot of fun. Thank you so much for stopping by the garage. Have an awesome day.